The numbers are, are really striking as well. AI chips are selling for $10,000 to $20,000 per unit, while the traditional industry average is usually under a dollar per chip. Hey everyone, I'm Clarkson. I'm Senior Director of Semi's Market Intelligence. It's uh, my pleasure to share my uh, market forecast and the insight with the audience. What we are seeing is uh, really unprecedented. AI has become in kind of uh, flipping the traditional growth pattern uh, between memory and logic segment. Uh, historically, logic was a steady grower, but now memory is uh, absolutely booming. DRAM revenue grew about 75% last year in 2024, and we are expecting another 50% growth this year. HBM specifically is just exploding uh, with growth rate around 17% year over year. Uh, it has become the crown jewel of the memory market. So on the logic side, it's a mixed result. Um, while memory remains a logic segment by total revenue, uh, the growth is very concentrated in AI-related chips like accelerators, GPU chips. And these chips command a premium pricing. We are talking about $10,000 to $20,000 per chip, uh, which versus to the industry average of under a dollar per chip. So it's uh, really a tale of two market uh, within logic. So the most interesting dynamic is that uh, we are seeing a winners takes all scenario. Um, companies with strong exposure to AIs are thriving while others remaining in the traditional consumer electronic segments, such as smartphones and PCs, are kind of struggling in comparison. So it's creating a massive bifurcation in the industry we haven't seen before. So about the memory market, it's all about data center and AI infrastructure right now. Uh, the hyperscalers are spending massive amount of money on semiconductors. We are talking about nearly uh, 300 billion in capex this year from leading uh, CSPs this year. Uh, this spending is anticipated to continue to grow in the next few years. And the spending on AI doesn't stop at the hyperscalers. Enter enterprise spending is expected to pick up rapidly. Uh, what we are seeing in this massive shift toward AI servers, uh, which requires much more sophisticated memory solutions and the adoption of DDR5 in servers is accelerating faster than expected. And we are also seeing strong demand for enterprise SSDs in AI workload uh, that needs high capacity storage. So on the other hand, uh, traditional markets are kind of really struggling. Uh, smartphones are showing only modest growth and the PC market is pretty much muted uh, with some uh, even though there are some early AI PC adoptions. And automotive is still working through its inventory issues, even though EV are showing uh, some promises, especially in China. So I think the real game changer is HBN adoption in servers. Uh, this wasn't even uh, a significant market segment a few years ago, and now it has become uh, a very critical element for AI applications we are also starting to see some uh, very interesting and fast development in edge AI, which uh, should really take off starting from next year. Um, so this is a truly remarkable as we are witnessing a fundamental restructuring of global semiconductor landscape. Um, China uh, still maintain the largest share of the equipment spending globally, uh, around 42% last year in 2024. And we expect this will continue uh, to be the case that China will ma maintain that position, but the dynamics are changing rapidly. Uh, China is now pivoting hard toward uh, self-reliance. Uh, despite uh, facing export restriction, uh, they are accelerating investment in mature nodes and domestic equipment development. The government has committed massive fundings 
and we are seeing a surge in domestic suppliers from equipment, material, component, EDA tools, and of course, new semiconductor facilities. So it, it is a strategic shift uh, from imports to building their own capabilities. Uh, as for Korea, Korea is in a really strong position because Samsung and SK Hynix are benefiting enormously from the HBM booms. So they are redirecting some China-bound investment back home. Korea will continue to be the top three largest equipment buyer and market globally in our forecast. And the memory sector is just driving incredible uh, growth there. The U.S. market is another story. U.S. will experience uh, the renaissance uh, thanks to the CHIPS Act. Uh, we are seeing over $200 billion in private investment com commitment such as TSMC in Arizona, Intel in Ohio, Samsung in Texas, uh, Micron in Idaho. So it's really about reducing dependence overseas and building domestic advanced node capability. I think long term, this restructuring reflects a shift from globalized to more regionalized supply chain, driven by geopolitical tension and supply chain resilience initiatives. Uh, the deglobalization trend will likely result in higher production costs in some areas, but improved regional resilience and uh, reduce single point of failure uh, vulnerability will be another uh, dynamic we are seeing. So I think uh, AI and HPC spending is much more sustainable than previous technologies uh, cycles. The AI and HPC investment trend is, is expected to sustain and grow significantly over the next several years. I mean, according to SEMI's forecast, AI and HPC-related equipment investment share will increase from 40% in 2025 to 45% by 2027 and grow again to 55% by 2030. So this represents investment in 7 nanometer and below logic uh, technology as well as related memory equipment spending. So the market fundamentals are really strong here. Uh, TSMC is talking about AI accelerator revenue to grow at over 40% CAGR through the end of this decade. And HPM market is exploding with similar growth rate. And now we are starting to see the edge AI deployment, which uh, creates a sustained demand for advanced logic productions. Um, looking forward to the second half of this decade, I think equipment investment will be sustained by HBM evolution, DDR5 transition, 2 nanometer RAM, and maybe early beyond CMOS researches. This feels like the most significant market transformation since the mobile revolutions, and it has much longer lag than previous cycles. So I think the recovery will come from a few areas for 300 millimeter wafers. Uh, firstly, the consumer electronic market is showing signs of recovery as inventory level normalized. So there is anticipated growth in smartphone and PC market, uh, particularly with the integration of AI capability, which drives uh, device upgrade cycles. And the mature no IC market is also expecting to recover supported by a rebound in consumer electronic demands. Uh, it is also about uh, capacity utilization improvement. We are seeing FAB utilization rate improving compared to 2024 as the industry works through the inventory corrections that has been waiting on the market uh, last year. Um, but thirdly, there is also a healthy capacity buildup happening. Uh, the global FAB capacity expanding uh, at roughly 5 to 6 percent annual. Uh, from a regional perspective, we are seeing capacity addition not only in Asia, but also in other regions such as the U.S. and Europe, uh, driven by government incentive and supply chain diversification efforts. So this geographic expansion is creating new demand for 300 millimeter capacity and wafers. So the bigger picture is that 300 millimeter wafer 
is becoming the dominant platform for more and more applications as companies see uh, better economics and higher transistor densities. Oh, so um, there are really four major forces uh, conversion to drive the wafer fab equipment growth, and they are all happening uh, simultaneously, which is uh, pretty unusual. Uh, firstly, AI and memory integration is exploding. Uh, DRAM equipment sales are showing massive growth, and NAND is recovering as supply demand normalized. The HPM specific equipment for 3D stacking and advanced packaging is creating entirely new equipment categories that didn't exist a few years ago. Uh, secondly, we are have some major advanced node transition happening. Uh, TSMC and Samsung are ramping up 3 nanometer production, followed by 2 nanometer RAM this year and next year. So the shift to gate or around architectures means that company needs completely new edge and deposition tools. Uh, thirdly, there is a massive global capacity expansion. We are seeing close to 100 new fabs coming online over the next couple of years. So these new fabs are not only coming from China, we are seeing US and other regions are adding significant capacity through government incentive and private investment. So finally, back-end equipment is really recovering. Test equipment and assembly and packaging e equipment are showing strong double-digit growth. Advanced packaging for AI chips is driving completely uh, new category. And these, will, uh, these are driven by complexity and equipment needs are likely that that's something we haven't seen before. So what is interesting is that this is just not happening in one segment. Uh, it's not one segment driving the growth. It's broad-based across multiple technology transition and geography, which give us more confidence that this trend will continue to grow. So the intensifying geographic environment is accelerating supply chain diversification effort across the semiconductor industry. In terms of ge geographic distribution, the US, Europe, and Japan are expected to almost double their FAB investment by 2028 compared to 2024, driven by policy incentives aimed at addressing supply chain concerns. Semiconductor companies are advised to diversify their global supply chains. Companies are also exploring alternative back-end manufacturing location outside of China, and the new location includes Southeast Asia, India, and other emerging markets. So, however, the practical challenges are still real. Uh, there are still challenges from talent shortage, uh, infrastructure constraint, and the complexity of rebuilding supply network that took decades to build. So companies are taking more balanced approach, uh, combining uh, reshoring with friendshoring networks. Uh, yeah, you're right. Indeed, um, there's, uh, the evidence is quite dramatic. So AI chips represent about maybe 20% of the semiconductor revenue last year but consume less than 1% of the total wafer process. So that's just unprecedented value density for AI chips. And the numbers are, are really striking as well. AI chips are selling for $10,000 to $20,000 per unit, while the traditional industry average is usually under a dollar per chip. Um, meanwhile, the silicon wafer shipment actually declined last year in 2024, despite uh, almost 20% revenue growth in semiconductor sales. Also, the advanced packaging market is growing at the double-digit rate, while the traditional assembly uh, remain flat. So you see the two, uh, two different stories between AI and non-AI-related uh, chip growth. So it all comes down to the value uh, of the density for AI chips. So I think the observation is correct that um, the TSMC and Samsung's vertical integration story is really uh, disruptive uh, for all set industry. T 
TSMC has essentially uh, redefined their addressable market uh, with Foundry 2.0 uh, that they are expanding from a, maybe a 150 billion Foundry market a year to a 250 billion market that includes advanced packaging services. So the, if we look at from the investment part side, TSMC, Intel, and Samsung each spent several billions on advanced packaging last year, uh, while the leading OSAS makers like ASC Group and MCOR spent much less. So that's why TSMC uh, retains majority of the COWAS orders, and OSAS are primarily handle less advanced segments. So of course, OSAS are trying to, to respond and to catch up. Uh, they are developing competing technologies to uh, TSMC's COAS and Info platform. So they are focusing on cost positioning and specialized application where they still had advantages. But this represents a kind of a permanent structure changes uh, between Foundry and OSAT. Foundries are capturing values through vertical integration, while traditional players uh, face margin pressure and reduce market relevance. So in the AI-driven world, advanced packaging has become a critical battleground and the foundries have significantly advantage in terms of technology integration and consumer relationship. The long-term implication is that OSAT uh, will need to find a new niches uh, or they will risk becoming increasingly marginalized in the highest value segment of the market.